Welcome to the second episode of the tutorial series on how to create a commercial iOS application using Swift 3. In the last episode, if you have seen, we had uh, completed the session with uh, showing how to actually fetch the movies list using URL session or uh, uh, the data task uh, using a resume function. So we had ended it uh, after deserializing the elements to an array. So let's see how we can actually represent the same in this fashion in the application. So for that, uh, even before we start laying out the UI or the user interface, let's create uh, some model objects which will retain the value which is being deserialized. So for that, let's create a class It will be a basic NS object. Uh, let's call it uh, movies uh, result or let's say movie result. It's uh, better to keep it uh, grouped within a models folder. And let's see what the response looks like, which uh, we will actually use. So a basic response look like this. It has elements, page, results, and then you have total pages and total results. So these are the four elements which are coming back as the response. So let's create a, a model variable called uh, page number. Then we have results. Also, let's keep property or a variable name called total pages then you have total results also we need the results which is actually which is actually an array So let's call each element of that array as movie item. So create a model named uh, movie item. It is again an NS object. So it needs to have basically what we are interested in our Let's say the movie ID as such, then the title of the movie, the release date, and the poster path, which is actually something we will download at a later point. So these are the four things which we are looking for. So we have the poster path here. Let's create a property called poster path. Let's set a default uh, value for that then you have uh, the release date which is again a string you need to have the title so let's call it movie title. There's no need that uh, the attribute names that is visible here as part of the response, the JSON response. 
be the same name here we only need to make sure that uh, while we are deserializing it we use it so it's so it also has the id so let's call it uh, movie id let's keep it as the first tell first variable So we have the movie item ready with these property values or the variables. Also, we need to define an array here of the movies collection. So movies array, let's call it movies array. And it is of type array of strings. find the type here so that's it we have the classes required for uh, retaining the values which needs to be shown or which needs to be bound with the uh, table view which we will use that later so once we receive the array on complete let's say here we can start binding it over here so for that uh, let's use something as a movies array which is something we will be binding with uh, the table view Also, there are some variables which is required here. Um, so at a base level, let's create something called as a movies results because we might, we will actually need that at the base instead of uh, having the movies uh, array defined there. So it's called movies result. and it should be of type let's instantiate it here itself the item so it has properties page number so let's make a change here where instead of this returning the string let's make it return an NS dictionary so let's go to fetch configurations and complete we need the movies result which is an NS dictionary So the corresponding changes has to be done here. So I made a change somewhere else. It should be at uh, this level. Also, let's make on one more closure method called on failure which will return a message this is to handle this condition here if on error you just call the failure method and pass that back and the on complete will take the NS dictionaries result so we don't need this here it 
directly return in this dictionary. So these two are escaping, just which is an optimization for memory management. So on so on complete we are returning the NS dictionary element. Same is being received here. So instead of this, we'll call it as movies result. Also, it needs to have one more failure closure defined. It should accept the failure one. Message is received here. So first thing that we will do is let's take the dictionary value for the key. So as I had said while fetching that value, we have to make sure that it matches the same name like available here because that's a dictionary we are we had deserialized so it's of type integer pages okay some looking somewhere else so here it is the third one is the total results Finally, we need to get the array of movies, which is the movies results. We need to create a new array for that. Or well, we need not because it's already instantiated here. So we just have to receive that. So even before adding an element, let's get the array here so let's it's coming under results and it's uh, NS array. So we have the movies array result here. Let's loop through that to get each and every value or each and every item. So let's call it movie JSON item. And we need to create a movie item object. values coming from the JSON element so we have a title We 
have to definitely make it an NS dictionary type. Let's keep it here. will be let's use the original title path just call it poster path I guess that's the right name it's poster path let's double check it that's a string type and we also need a release date Finally, append this uh, to our movie's result. Once this is done, we will have the movie's results ready. So as a final step, let's print this. And see whether it's being received in the model element. So it's printing the movie's results here. Does not really give you what is there, but let's just see a page number. There you have it. It's printing one as a page number. So once that is done, let's start creating the user interface.